Cunning and elusive, those internet con artists can soak you for a fortune, then vanish. Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. It's a scam that won't go away. Those emails arriving from exotic places pleading for help and promising millions. Americans keep biting and losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year to these crooks. Trouble is, they're not easy to catch. But tonight, in a Dateline hidden camera investigation, Chris Hansen takes on a different kind of predator to beat these cons at their own game. Ever get an email like this? My name is Mrs. Mariam Ibrahim. I am suffering from long-time cancer of the breast. Before my late husband died, he deposited the sum of $20 million. 20% of this money will be for your time and effort. The writer sometimes appears to be a desperate character in a far-off land, offering millions in reward money if you'd only help them in their plight, usually by sending your own money first. If you get a letter like this, you probably ignore it, smelling a scam. But there are thousands of others who take the bait, falling for this global billion-dollar racket. In 2005, we introduced you to Pam Krause. I thought I was doing something to, to help somebody out. A town treasurer in Wisconsin, she got an email which asked her to help a desperate widow recover her husband's fortune. In return, she'd get a reward of millions of dollars, but only after she paid some fees in advance. Altogether, she lost $18,000. I literally wiped out savings accounts and uh, maxed out credit cards. And although the scam's been around for years, people continue to fall for it. It's unfortunate, but they do. Special Agent John Hambrick of the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. Are these people stupid who are falling for this? Well, no, they're not. They're, some are quite well educated. Case in point? Nestled along the frozen shoreline of Lake Huron, Harrisville is the seat of Alcona County, Michigan. In the bitter winds this winter, residents are freezing in their tracks, and not because of the weather. It shocks me that a guy that I thought was a pretty smart guy could fall for something like this. What happened? This time, a county treasurer. That's right, this man, Thomas Katona, the man who had control of the county checkbook, got an email that promised millions if he'd only invest some upfront money first. Police say he took the bait hook, line, and sinker. First, he sent the scammers $70,000 of his own money. Then, the crooks apparently convinced him to sink at least $180,000 of county money into the scheme and a total of $1.2 million may be missing from the public till. Taxpayers of Elkona County are obviously going to suffer some loss here. Every property owner that pays property taxes is going to feel some sort of loss from this. Katona faces 11 felony counts, um, including day, embezzlement and forgery. When he declined to speak for himself in court, the judge entered a plea of not guilty for him. The email scam here in Michigan is just the latest and most extreme example of a decades-old problem that the Internet has only made more widespread. It's Canada, England, the Netherlands. It's everywhere at this point. The FBI's John Hambrick says at least 10,000 people will be victimized by the email cons this year alone. The majority of the scams originate in West Africa, especially Nigeria, and are called 419 scams, named for the Nigerian law which makes them illegal there. Some operate from internet cafes like this, where the crooks are able to send millions of messages hoping to lure the unsuspecting victim. And the ability to uh, send out exponentially more in terms of volume increases their returns. A fraction of a percentage of a response is significant to them. Millions of dollars at stake. But the criminals operate worldwide and appear to be only loosely connected, not necessarily controlled by a single kingpin. The scammers have been around for years, but there are more and more victims. What makes these offers so alluring to people? What makes the average guy say, all right, I'll invest eight, ten, twenty thousand dollars in this? I don't have an answer for that one. I, I, I would say, yeah, it's an, easy, it's an easy buck. It's the potential to be that once-in-a-lifetime windfall of money. 
Most of the con men remain hidden, far away overseas, protected by the anonymity of the Internet. And according to law enforcement, that's where they are most likely to stay. Why can't the FBI do more about this? In terms of prioritization of resources, we're focused on terrorism at this point. Um, it simply is not a high enough priority for us to focus on this. Authorities say the scammers are part of several international networks based here in West Africa that are nearly impossible to put out of business. The FBI says Nigeria, for instance, has made some progress, but every time a scammer is brought down, another takes his place. As names on emails, these scammers are faceless, phantoms, almost impossible to track down. But what if we could take on the challenge of finding some of these ripoff artists, make it our mission to smoke out some of these con men? Tonight from London and other places around the world, we'll show you how Americans are getting ripped off in a torrent of internet scams. But this time on Hidden Camera, you'll see how Dateline turned the tables. An investigation where a financial predator gets taken for a ride. We'll make them believe they're the ones who are going to make a fortune. I'm very interested in this opportunity. Make it too much for them to resist. Mr. Basile is in the lobby. Tonight, one by one, these super scammers are about to be unmasked. How often do you rip people off this way? 